to, to be a part of, of our worship today. Just, just a few announcements. You know that we have moved into phase two um, of our governor's proclamation and really not much is going to change. Um, you still enter and exit the facilities as you have been doing. You'll still sanitize your hands, wear gloves if you prefer, masks if you prefer. Staff and volunteers must wear masks. Um, about the only thing major that's changed is we've gone from 25% capacity to 50% capacity and we, we don't have to worry about that. Um, still six feet uh, social distancing. Um, there, there are two things that we internally are changing. And I hope that that's an encouragement to you. It is to me, but we will be resuming next Sunday two small groups, two Sunday school class units. Uh, one will be meeting in the North Foyer. Um, Edward Newman will be leading that class. Um, his class will involve topical studies. Then we will have a, a larger class here in the sanctuary combining life group one, the Grace class and the Ruth class. Uh, so those three classes are going to combine into one here in the sanctuary. And then all children, preschool, and youth are encouraged uh, to take advantage of this opportunity to, to be able to sit with their parents or their family units during small group and Sunday school. Um, Wednesday evening services, however, are going to continue being delivered uh, via our website, YouTube, and Facebook unless or until we have a group of volunteers that, that will be here prior to Wednesday's Bible study and sanitize and, and, and clean the sanctuary uh, doors and restrooms. So if we want to come back together on Wednesday evenings, I need a crew of about two to four people consistently to make sure the sanctuary, the foyer, the doors, the restrooms, are clean and sanitized. Until that volunteer crew has been put together, uh, we will continue Wednesday evening Bible studies as we have been doing. Um, either way, I'm okay. With either way, it doesn't really matter to me. I do enjoy being together, but we still have an opportunity to do Bible study. It's just in a different way, a different format. So if you want to volunteer for that small cleaning crew uh, that, that will come in before Wednesday, and re clean and sanitize, then um, get, uh, call the church office or get with me. Send me a text, call me, and tell me that you'd like to do that. We'll put you on the list. Um, anyway, uh, again, it's good to see everyone. Um, oh, this is a major change, I almost forgot. Uh, beginning next Sunday, that's when the small groups will begin, but beginning next Sunday, we have a time change. We will be uh, meeting for those Sunday school small groups at 10 o'clock. And those small group Sunday school classes will last from 10 until 10.50. And then worship will begin at 11. So that is a time change. Next Sunday, two, two small groups, Sunday school classes, North Foyer, Topical, Sanctuary, Bible Book, Study, those classes are beginning at 10 o'clock, going until 10.50, with worship beginning at 11. That is a time change. So make note of those things you should have received. Uh, a pastor's letter, my letter to you via email. Joanna sent this out to everyone uh, yesterday, Saturday. So you, you all should have this. But if not, there are extra copies available um, that, that you can have. Just look on that back table back there. But be very careful when you pick that up just to make sure you pick up one unless you have on your gloves. Well, I love y'all. It's so good again to see you here. The praise team is going to come and they're going to continue uh, to lead us in worship. Come on, y'all. Kim, praise team. We, we thank you for the work that you guys are doing. We really appreciate you leading us in worship.
thing for leading us in worship. Uh, just one brief thing before we get into the message. Uh, some people have been asking me about tithes and offerings. We still collect those the same way we have been doing. There are the plates on the back table. You just drop that in either on your way in or on your way out. Or you can continue mailing it into the church. Or I think some people uh, are going to their bank to do like a, a direct deposit or an automatic draft. Um, either way, those are, those are our options. Put them on the back table on Sundays or you can mail those in or have those sent from your bank. Well, this morning we continue with our, our five-part sermon series from the book of Daniel, simply entitled, Life. Part one, uh, we worked our way through Daniel chapter one with a message entitled, Life Provisions. Part two, we worked our way through Daniel chapter two, the message was entitled, Wisdom for Life. Part three, last week, we continued our series with Daniel chapter 4 uh, with a message entitled Sovereign of Life. Well, this morning we continue now in part 4 uh, from Daniel chapter 7. Our message this morning is entitled Life Undistressed. Life Undistressed. If you're taking notes, that will be what you'll write down. Life Undistressed. Daniel chapter 7. Well, let me pray for us, please. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being together this morning. We thank you for these wonderful facilities that you provided for us to come in the comfort, to, to be together, to be encouraged, to be strengthened. But Father, we know that church is not about a facility. It's truly uh, not about individualistic comfort. But Lord, you provided these things and we thank you for the blessing of them. But Lord, we know we are the church as we go about our business every day. We represent your kingdom. And I pray, Father, that you use us in tremendous ways as we share you with those whom we come in contact with. Father, I pray now that you rid us of all distractions, that you help us to focus on your word. As we come to feed and rest in your word, Lord, I pray you teach us. I pray you challenge us. I pray, Lord, you convict our hearts as we look to you through your word. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for the Holy Spirit indwelling each believer here this morning. Father, just, just bless us through your word. Father, we love you, we praise you, we exalt you, we magnify you. It's all about you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's get right into our text. So if you would take your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 7. We're going to break the chapter up a little bit. You'll see why in just a minute. But we're going to be reading in Daniel chapter 7, 1 through 16a. You got it? All right, Daniel chapter 7, 1 through 16a. I'm going to move over here. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. And that's what we have here, the substance of his dream. Now, Belshazzar was Nebuchadnezzar's son, who took over the kingship of Babylon after Nebuchadnezzar. So Daniel, in the first year of the new king, Belshazzar, uh, Daniel had a dream and visions, and we have them here. Verse 2. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. 
I watched until its wings were torn off and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being and the mind of a human was given to it. Can't you just imagine that and, and visualize that? Verse 5, And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, get up and eat your fill of flesh. After that, I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard. And on its back, it had four wings like those of a bird. The beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very, very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from the former beasts. And it had ten horns. Can't you see that? Visualize that. They, uh, Daniel continued, verse 8, While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. I, as I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow, purity. The hair of his head was white like wool, wisdom. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. This is God the Father sitting upon his throne among other thrones. The wheels... They either were literal wheels, as was known in the ancient days, their thrones had wheels, they moved them about, or it could mean the dust, like a, like a mist coming out with a fire, a flame. And thousands upon ten thousands upon thousands waited before him, stood before him, angels. God the Father. Verse 11. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into His presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped Him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Again, Jesus Christ. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit. And the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this. Then what we have in verses 16b through 27 is the interpretation of Daniel's vision in the night. Daniel's, the interpretation given to Daniel from his dream. Um, 
But for our message today, we're not going to get into interpretation. We're not going to get into the actual meaning or the possible meaning of the four beasts. Um, that'll have to be for a Bible study or for another sermon series. So I want us to pick up now in verse 26 and go to the end of the chapter 26, 27, and 28. Contextually, after the four beasts was destroyed, verse 26, but the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. That's the four beasts, the, the number four, the fourth beast. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey Him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Now I want us to think about a few things. I want us to think about stress and I want us to think about distress. Now bear with me as we go through some of these facts about stress and distress. I promise I have a reason. Stress is a state of mental or emotional tension. It's a mental or emotional tension resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. Even positive life changes, such as a job promotion, a new home, a new baby in the house, can produce stress. Stress is a normal part of life. Do you hear that? Stress is a normal part of life. Stress is normal. It's a normal reaction the body has when changes occur. Our bodies will react to either adverse or positive changes physically, mentally, emotionally, or a mixture of all three. Now, do you find this to be true in your life. Do you? Do you find this to be true in your life? Do you ever get stressed out? Oh, I am so stressed out. Have you ever said that? Of course you have. We all have stress. Certain levels of stress are normal. But if it's not managed well, there's a crossing over point when stress becomes distress. Let me reiterate that. We all have stress. Certain levels of stress are normal, but if it's not managed well, if it's not kept in check, there's a crossing over point when stress becomes distress. In our lives, in your life, in my life, when stress levels become abnormal, it moves us from being stressed into being distressed. So let's think about distress. Distress is a state of extreme anxiety, a state of extreme sorrow, extreme pain. In my research, I ran across a very helpful website, mentalhealth.net. Well, according to mentalhealth.net, stress that continues without relief will lead to negative reactions. That makes sense. It will lead to distress which disturbs the body's functions. Internal balance, equilibrium, leading to prolonged physical symptoms such as muscle, joint, back pain, headaches, upset stomach, I feel like a commercial, upset stomach, high blood pressure, chest pains, 
other bodily dysfunctions and severe disruptions in sleep patterns. Can you relate to any of those? Sure you can. Well, think about this. The contributing factors of stress fall broadly into four types of categories. Now, these are not exhaustive. The four categories of factors of stress, physical stress. Factors include loss of energy, aches, pains, tense muscles, frequent colds, infections, change of our color, of our complexion. The list goes on. It's not exhaustive. The second, psychological stress. Factors include fear, frustration, sadness, anger, worry, guilt, shame, anxiety, panic attacks, and the sense of being out of control, not being in control. Can any relate to any of those? The third, psychosocial. Stress factors include relationship difficulties, lack of social support, lack of resources for adequate survival, loss of employment, loss of investments, loss of loved ones, and isolation. Can you relate to any of those? The fourth, psycho-spiritual. Stress factors include a crisis of values, meaning, purpose, a joyless striving instead of productive, satisfying, meaningful, and fulfilling work, and a misalignment within one's core spiritual beliefs. Can you relate to any of those? Stress is common to all, but what triggers stress is different. Distress is not common to all, but what triggers distress is the same. Stress that goes unchecked, unmanaged. So what? I can hear your, in your question. So what? Why is he babbling on about all of this? I'm not sitting in a health class for a grade. Why is he going on and on about this? I'm babbling about this. I'm going on and on about this because I want to solidify in your heart. I want to solidify in your mind our point for today. You're going to have to wait for our point. Because I'm going to continue my battle. <laughs> Both stress and distress are nothing new. Do you think that you're the first person to have stress? Do you think that you are the first person to suffer distress? It's nothing new. Stress and distress have been around for as long as human beings have existed. Think back to the Garden of Eden. Do you see a pattern of stress? Do you see a pattern of going into distress? Yes, from the very beginning. Now I'm sure that we all could give many examples of times of stress or distress from our personal lives. And even though that, that would be beneficial, literally beneficial for us to do that, I want us to look to the Word of God for an example, and I want to share with you three biblical ways that you and I can head off moving from stressed to distress. Three ways that we can head off moving from stress to distress. Now look back to chapter 7. Of course, our example of a stressed out life is Daniel. Look at verse 15. 
I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit. And the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. The key word here in verse 15 is troubled. In Hebrew, troubled here meant that Daniel's stress pierced. Daniel's stress cut his spirit. Another key word in verse 15, look at your text. The word may differ according to what translation you have. But another key word in verse 15 is disturbed, which meant that Daniel's stress kept on alarming him. It was continuous. Now look at verse 28. You still following along with me? Verse 28. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts and my face turned pale. But I kept the matter to myself. The key words here are deeply troubled. This meant that Daniel moved from being troubled into being deeply troubled or a greater quantity troubled. In Hebrew, Daniel was terrified. Notice that within the context of Daniel's life experience, by verse 28, his stress level had increased dramatically and it moved him from being stressed into being distressed. We know this not only by the change in verbiage, by the change of the words used, but also by the next phrase in verse 28. My face turned pale. The color of Daniel's face physically changed. Daniel's countenance changed. If you recall from the introductory remarks, the introductory, introductory comments, stress that continues without relief will lead to negative reactions. It will lead to distress which disturbs the body's functions. Daniel was so stressed out to the point that it moved him to becoming distressed, his color changed. How do we know that Daniel did not receive relief from his stress? How do we know that Daniel had no relief from his stress? We know this by Daniel's very last statement in 28. Look at it. I kept the matter to myself. What do we not see here? We don't see Daniel praying to God for stress relief. We don't see Daniel sharing his heart with his fellow exiles for stress relief. We don't see those two things. All we see here is that Daniel kept the matter to himself. In other words, Daniel bottled it all up. Stress, unchecked, unmanaged, leads to distress. Daniel, a man of great prayer, a man of great spiritual strength, he was a man that knew God of all wisdom. He was a man that consistently acknowledged and submitted to God's sovereignty. But yet Daniel, in that life moment, moved from being stressed to being distressed. Here's the point. I told you I would give it to you. Here's 
here's the point. In life, stress is inevitable. Distress is avoidable. In life, stress is inevitable. Distress is avoidable. Well, you just don't know what I've been through. You don't know what it's like for me. Everyone has stress. Everyone has different levels of stress. Everyone has different triggers for stress. But not everyone is distressed. In life, when you and I are stressed, remember stress is common to all. Everyone experiences stress. When you and I are stressed, what can we do to guard ourselves from becoming distressed? Well, from our text, I want to share with you, I want to provide you with three ways. Three ways to guard yourself from becoming, di from, yeah, from becoming distressed. Three ways. The first way that we can guard ourselves from becoming distressed is in verses 9 and 10. Keep looking at the Word with me. If you're using a phone, you're using a tablet. Don't you be looking at Facebook. Don't you be Instagramming. Don't you be Snapchatting. Word. You ain't got time for that. You ain't got time for this. The first way that we can guard ourselves from becoming distressed, verses 9 and 10. As I looked... Thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. His hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him in life. When you and I are stressed, what can we do to guard ourselves from becoming distressed? Remember and lean into the fact that our God, the one true God, the Ancient of Days, rules in all purity and all wisdom. Now you know I get excited sometimes when I preach. I don't mean to holler, it just happens, so don't be offended by my hollering. The second way that we can guard ourselves from becoming distressed, we see in verses 13 and 14. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. In life, when you and I are stressed, what can we do to guard ourselves from becoming distressed? Remember and lean into the fact that Jesus Christ, our Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords has been given all authority, all glory, all sovereign power. His dominion, His kingdom is everlasting. Our Savior.
The third and last way that we can guard ourselves from becoming distressed, we see in verses 26 and 27. But the court will sit, and his power, the fourth, the fourth beast, his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey Him in life. When you and I are stressed, what can we do to guard ourselves from becoming distressed? Remember and lean into the truth. Lean into the fact that because we are the holy people of the Most High, because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we are a part of the everlasting kingdom. In life, stress is inevitable. Distress is avoidable. If you and I remember and lean into these truths, we will live a life undistressed. Kim and the praise team are coming. They're going to lead us. And our song of reflection, we're going to be singing a Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus medley. They worked hard yesterday, uh, preparing, continuing to prepare for you today, to lead you today. Make sure you acknowledge uh, our praise team, encourage them. We all need encouragement. As we sing together, Truly, I want you to reflect on the point. In life, stress is inevitable. Distress is avoidable. If we remember those three truths. God ancient of days rules. One like the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Savior, has been given all authority, glory, sovereign power, dominion. His kingdom is everlasting. You and I, in, with, through Christ, joint heirs, We are part of the eternal kingdom. Be encouraged by those three truths and avoid going from stress to distress. Let's stand together. Kim and the praise team are going to lead us.
scripture compilation taken from Philippians, Psalm, Proverbs, and 2 Thessalonians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Cast your burden on the Lord. And He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will make straight your paths. I sought the Lord. And He answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. Now... May the Lord of peace Himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you. Amen. Be encouraged. Y'all have a great week. Love y'all.